Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome after the summer break. I, it's my pleasure to start the first session of uh, something new at the Center for Theoretical Physics. Namely, once a month we'll be we'll be having something which we call colloquium, Warsaw colloquium uh, of uh, theoretical physics, where the idea is to invite a leading scientist in in different areas of. Uh, of theoretical physics to give us some sort of an overview, some general presentation of, of uh, subjects of the of the expertise. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, who is who is opening the series of uh, of um, uh, Warsaw Colloquia, uh, Darius Kruszczynski from Nicolas Copernicus uh, University in uh, Toru. Uh, Darek actually is uh, connected to our center because he was a uh, long time ago, he was a PhD student of uh, Professor Kijowski. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> years, years ago, uh, Darek is uh, one of the uh, top specialists in uh, mathematical theory of uh, open quantum systems. Um, he is a very big specialist in, in, in a subject that was very popular a few years ago, namely quantum, uh, namely Markovianity in, in quantum dynamics. He is also an expert in mathematical theory of entanglement, entanglement detection, um, and uh, related mathematical tools like uh, positive but not completely positive uh, maths. Well, today uh, we will hear about uh, we will hear a seminar about um, uh, quantum Markovian uh, semi groups. Beyond, beyond, even beyond. I hope first we'll we'll hear what are they, and then we'll go beyond. As I said, the the, the topic was uh, pretty active a few years ago. Uh, it's still a. a Active uh, area of research: the, the, the mathematical structure of open open system due to their level of immense level of complication. Okay, so it's my pleasure to introduce Darek. Please, the ground is yours. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure to be here. So, thank you very much, Darek, for your kind invitation and kind introduction. As, as Jarek uh, said, uh, my first visit to the center was long ago in the late, late 80s. I remember the, the center was located in different place, small building, only a few professors and a few PhD students. Also. Thank you very much, Jurek, for, for your support at that time. Okay, so this is an outline of my talk, so I will... I will tell you how we should go beyond uh, Schrodinger equation, and then I will I will um, uh, stick to basic facts about Markovian semi-groups. Then we go beyond. Then, if I still have time, I will tell you what's the connection to to stochastic processes, classical and quantum, and there is nice connection to uh, so-called legged GARC inequalities and I would like to illustrate all that stuff with some simple paradigmatic examples of simple qubit evolution like dissipation and dephasing. Okay, so we all love shredding the equation. So we teach our students how to how to look for the spectra of important Hamiltonians and eventually we teach our students how to how to solve dynamics governed by Schrodinger equation. In my talk, uh, I will need a bit more general scenario. So I will represent uh, quantum states by density operators, which can be defined as just mixture of pure states represented by vectors in the Hilbert space. So mathematical representations of these objects are via semi-positive operators, which imply the permission, plus this normalization condition, which implies that we have a nice 
probabilistic interpretation in full analogy to classical scenario, when you have classical probability distribution. So look, if you, if you fix an arbitrary autonormal basis in the Hilbert space, so given that kind of operator, you can immediately produce standard classical probability distribution. So in a sense, such uh, operator encodes infinitely many classical probability distributions. So if you if you replace a pure state represented by a, a vector in the Hilbert space by density operators, and instead of Schrodinger equation, we have well-known Neumann equation for the evolution of the density operator, and the evolution is represented in the very, very simple way to simply find a family of unitary operators, right, generated by Hamiltonian of the system, and then pure states evolve according to this simple law, unitary laws, and the corresponding density operator evolves according to this well-known form. Okay, what are the properties? of this very special, very special unitary law. Also, the properties are very well known. If you start with pure state, it evolves into pure state. Even more generally, the purity of the state is conserved. Well, by purity, I understand trace of rho squared. Well, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, almost trivial to, to observe because during such kind of, of transformation, you know that the, the spectrum of the operator is preserved. So if you consider a quantity, which is defined only in terms of the spectrum, this quantity is preserved during the, uh, after applying that kind of transformation. So not only the purity is conserved by von Neumann entropy is conserved as well and there are many more well-known nice properties. So the, the natural question is, do we really need to go beyond that nice unitary law? And actually we do because there are a lot of important processes, like for example, relaxation or thermalization or decoherence, which cannot be described using this simple unitary law. So the question is how to go beyond, right? How to go beyond the simple law. So to, uh, to generalize this unitary transformation law, our goal is to find another transformation which enjoys natural properties. I mean, it's, it's linear, it's positive in the sense that if you apply this transformation to a positive operator, the result should be a positive operator as well. And in order to preserve probabilistic interpretation, this transformation has to enjoy another property, which is trace preserving. Right. So if you apply phi, <coughs> the legitimate density operator, you should receive as an output legitimate density operator. Of course, this, this law has uh, all these properties, right? It's, it's linear, it's, it's positive and trace preserving, obviously. So the question is, if you are able to find transformation like this, right? So suppose that we find transformation like this, which enjoys all these properties, mathematical properties. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it true that this transformation is consistent with physical laws, we know. So what happens if we consider composite system? Suppose we have two subsystems, two systems, quantum systems, A and B, and we now we consider a composite system living in the Hilbert space, which is just a tensor product of those two, okay? And suppose that uh, we have two maps, right? Two legitimate maps. I mean, by legitimate, I mean that Phi A transforms 
density operators of subsystem A into density operators of subsystem B, and the same for phi B, which acts on density operators on the subsystem. So in a natural way, we may construct a map, which is just a tensor product, right? Now, this map acts on operators living in the total Hilbert space. But now the bad, bad news is that even if those two are positive in the sense that they transform density operators into density operators, the tensor product in general does not have this property, right? So you may you may use those two to safely transform states of subsystems A and B separately, but you in general you cannot use this map, which is a tensor product of those two, to safely transform states of the composite system, right? <laughs> So what goes wrong? What goes wrong with the tensor product? And the answer is, the problem we face is, is created by the very presence of entanglement. Namely, the tensor product of two maps, phi A and phi B, safely transform states which are not entangled, but in general fails for states which are entangled. So not all positive maps with nice mathematical properties can serve as a transformation in quantum physics. Let me briefly uh, remind what I mean by entangled states. So in the case of pure states, uh, we call a um, um, vector Psi AB separable if it has a simple product form, otherwise it is entangled. And in the case of mixed states, a state is separable if it can be represented as a convex combination of products, right? Of products where these guys are just density matrices of subsystem A, and those guys are density operators for subsystem B. If you cannot represent your density operator in this form, the state is entangled. And as you know, one of the big problems of theoretical <coughs> quantum entanglement is to decide whether given a mixed state of a composite system, to decide whether or not you can decompose a state into complex combination of products. <coughs> which means that the state is separable, or to prove that it is impossible. Now, from this very structure, you immediately see that if you apply map of this form to the state which has the form, all operations are legitimate because phi A acts only on this density operators, and phi B acts on those ones. However, if the state cannot be represented like that, the action of the tensor product of two maps in general fails. So, we know that this law is physically legitimate, right? This is unitary law. Does, so the question is, does mathematics offer any solution to this problem that not all positive maps can be used as a legitimate, not all positive maps can be used as a legitimate physical maps. Right? And actually, mathematics offered very nice solution, which is due to a mathematician Steinspring. And later on was uh, elaborated by Halper. So Stein, uh, Steinschenk uh, in, in, introduced very special sub, uh, subclass of positive maps. He called those maps completely positive. They enjoyed very nice 
mathematical properties. That was the reason for, for Stein Spring to introduce that maps. Then Krauss realized that any such map possess very nice, very simple representation. So it's a obvious generalization of this law, right? So this unitary law is a very special example of that general. Here you have only one so-called so-called cross operator, okay, alpha. Okay, and moreover, Krauss observes that all physically legitimate operations, which can be performed on quantum states, can be represented by a completely positive map. So maps which enjoy this elegant and very simple representation. If you require that the map is also trace preserving, then this Krauss operators enjoy additional properties. And nowadays it is well known that completely positive maps provide basic tool in quantum information theory because one of the most important object in this theory, which is so-called quantum channel, can be mathematically represented by a map which is completely positive, which means that it possesses that kind of representation and trace preserving. Very good. So you see, this is just another example of celebrated Wigner statement on unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the natural sciences. Okay, so. What I mean by quantum evolution? By quantum evolution, I mean a, a, a family parameterized by time, a family of maps, right, the lambda t. Each map is completely positive and trace preserving. Right, and the idea is very simple. You pick up, a, uh, you pick up an initial state at time zero. You apply a map lambda t at your initial state. And what comes out is a state at time at the current time t. And usually we call this family of maps just quantum dynamical map. Right? So quantum evolution is mathematically represented by quantum dynamical map. So family of completely positive trait and trait preserving maps. And very special example of such such map, such dynamical map is a, is a map enjoying additional property, which is that one. So it enjoys a very simple, very simple mode that if you, if you compose maps at time s, time t, you get a map at time t plus s. Why we call it semi-group? So the composition law is satisfied as for, for example, unitary group. However, contrary to unitary group, here you cannot invert lambda t. Well, as a mathematical object, you can invert, but the inverse of lambda of t is no longer completely positive, which means that, evolu that uh, evolution in general well, evolution represented in this way, in general, is not reversible. Right? You cannot invert time. What we know about uh, dynamical semi-groups? Well, it's pretty obvious that dynamical semi-group uh, semi is, is uniquely generated by one, but unique, uh, essentially unique generator. We call it generator of, of Markovian semi-group. And the question is, what are the properties? What's the structure of the generator, which guarantee that if you compute the map, the map is legitimate. I mean, completely positive and trace preserving for an non-negative T. Of course, this formula, la lambda T equal E to the power, is just a uh, 
graphical sign. It only means that you may divide this interval of time into small pieces and recollect. Absolutely, absolutely. But the very question is just what does it mean this area? Exactly. So the question is, what's the structure of the generator? And this problem was nicely solved more than 40 years ago by two in two papers. One was published by Gorini, Kosakowski, and Sudarshan. And in parallel, there was another very nice paper by, by Lindblad. Essentially, the result was the same. This is a picture taken one year before publication in the office of Professor Ingarden in Torun. So you can see Kosakowski, Sudarshan, and Vittorio Gorini. This is a structure, right? So that kind of, of equation, which is called usually GKLS, or just some people just call it simply Lindblad equation or Lindbladian. As you see, we have quite non-trivial generalization of the standard von Neumann equation. We have completely new piece of the universal form where this LK operators, well, from the mathematical point of view, they are completely arbitrary. From the physical point of view, they encode information about the noise. Right? <laughs> they tell you about the interaction of your system with the environment. And there are some, some, some rates. And the condition on, on these rates is that they are positive. Right? So this is the only requirement. So H is just self-adjoint operator. LK are arbitrary. People call it noise operator. And rates are positive. This is a photo of this three famous guys taken exactly 40 years after publication of, of the famous paper again in Toruń. Unfortunately, George Sudarshan passed away five years ago and Andrzej Kosakowski passed away two years ago. Interestingly, at the same year, Valentin Franke published a paper which was completely unnoticed in the Russian journal Theoreticzkaya and Mathematiczkaya Physica. Eventually, it was translated to English. And he, uh, uh, without knowing about uh, Gorini Kosakowski Sodarshan paper and, and uh, Limpa paper, he derives the following equation. So you know that uh, this piece is exactly that uh, that one found by by this guy's Gorini at all. Mm -hmm. But he proposed another one, right? You see, there's only one difference between this piece and that one. There is a, another operation, transposition, right? He knew nothing about the, the concept of complete positivity. But people working in, in uh, quantum information immediately realize that if you add this piece and that one, you obtain a map which is a sum of completely positive, you see Krauss representation, and completely positive composed with transpositions. With transposition. But we know that such maps. There were studies, for example, by Professor Voronovich. And Voronovich, exactly in the same year, published a paper in which he proved that in two dimensions, qubit scenario, all positive maps are decomposable, can be decomposed into a sum of map like that and map like that. So eventually, that guy proves the same result, right? Without the knowledge of the Voronovich paper. A few years ago, the, some, some guys published a paper in which they proposed to call our, our favorite equation, not just Gorini Kosakowski, Linda Sudarshan, but Frank and Gorini Kosakowski 
That's the Dutch. However, the, the original result was, was uh, the requirements were, were clear from the very beginning because they, they clearly stated that they, they, they are looking for the generator of completely positive, not just positive, but completely positive, and they, they found necessary and sufficient conditions. The result of Franke Ward is, is necessary and sufficient, but only if the dimension is so, qubit, qubit, standard. For higher dimension, it is not so. Okay. Interestingly, well, the result was published in, in 76. However, still, some people, even very serious, like those guys from, from Stanford, I believe that you know those names. They attack the same problem. Look what they say. They motivated by Hawking's proposal that quantum mechanical density matrix rho obeys an equation more general than the Schrodinger equation. We study the general properties of evolution for rho. And look what they found. They found the following structure, right? Well, there is a misprint because here they uh, um, should have this matrix H, A, alpha, beta. If you compare this form to that one, in this form, this, this gammas are just eigenvalues of, of this matrix. Right. And now look what, what they say. So this, this very form already guarantee, guarantees that the trace is preserved. But then they, 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 they state, we still need to implement the requirements that uh, density operator remain positive. And this is a key problem. Okay, one might also insist that the entropy defined by rho does not decrease with time. But now we know that it is not true. The entropy can decrease or increase. It depends on, on the generator. And they are very honest to state, we don't know what conditions are necessary to ensure these properties. But they know sufficient condition. For them, sufficient condition is pretty obvious that this matrix uh, has to be positive, which means that eigenvalues are positive. Right? And they recover this. But it, it, it's clear that, well, they were, no, that they were not aware of the very concept of complete positivity. So without knowing this concept, this, the problem is essentially not tractable. No. <laughs> okay. Is this, is this concept really, really important? Well, it, it allows to mathematically solve the problem, but is it important for physics? So in the qubit scenario, I believe that majority of you familiar with the famous block equations and in, in this block equations we have two characteristic times relaxation times mm -hmm. transversal one and longitudinal nine, uh, one well so if, if you consider uh, a qubit and ge geometric picture of the block block vector yeah. you remember the positivity of the density operator uh, means that the, the block vector stays within block ball of radius one, right? So essentially, this, yeah. this equation guarantees that it stays with the block ball for arbitrary relaxation times, transversal and longitudinal. However, complete positivity at essential conditions that those two times are not completely arbitrary, but have to satisfy this condition. And actually, this condition is well well tested in the laboratory. So this is, you know, clear sign that, well, true physical evolution, well tested, at least in the qubit qubit case, somehow is compatible with this nice mathematical notion of complete positivity. Okay, very good. But let me stress again, this is nice mathematical mathematical representation. Do we have a reasonable physical model compatible with evolution governed by that kind of 
dynamical equations. And actually we do. There is a beautiful theory, <coughs> which is very popular nowadays. This theory is called theory of open quantum system. And this theory, people study the uh, evolution of the quantum system, which interacts with another one, usually called environment. And well, it's pretty obvious that an, an, a, realistic, an a realistic system is, is never perfectly isolated from the rest of the world. So if you, if you consider um, the total one, I mean, the system plus environment is a closed system. So the closed close system is, is governed by some total Hamiltonian, <laughs> which is the sum of Hamiltonian of the system, Hamiltonian of the environment, and the Hamiltonian, which describes the interaction of those two guys. Right? I, I uh, introduce also the coupling constant. OK, so what, what we do, this is a Hamiltonian of the total system. If we prepare the initial state in this product form, so no correlation between state of the system and state of the environment. And we let them evolve according to standard Schrodinger unitary evolution. Okay, so we just generate a traje trajectory of density operators. But of course, if the interaction is non trivial, the state at time t is no longer of the product form. Well, now during the evolution, the non trivial correlation between system and environment are produced. And eventually, if you are interested only how the system degrees of freedom are evolving, we simply forget about environmental degrees of freedom, which is mathematically represented by this operation of partial trace. Right? So we, we trace, but only mm -hmm. above all degrees of freedom of the environment. So what comes out is a legitimate low, legitimate evolution of the system itself. But it's pretty clear that this law is no longer unitary. Right? So to get dynamical semi-group, usually one, one needs to, to apply additional approximations like well-known for Markov approximation. So we simply assume that the, the, the coupling is, is small, right? And another, another assumption is that the environment is usually much bigger than the system <coughs> and the, the, the system essentially does not influence the evolution of the environment plus another approximation which is usually called ergodic average this approximation is well known in quantum optics under the name you are familiar with which is just standard rotating wave approximation so if you apply those two additional approximation to that kind of evolution what comes out is a, 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 an evolution of the density operator, which is governed by the standard Guerini-Kosakowski Lindas-Darshan master equation. So Markovian semi-group, which has very, very beautiful ma mathematical presentation, provides Markovian semi-group provides just an approximation to the true evolution, reduced evolution. Why, why reduce? Because we, we reduce evolution by, by tracing out environmental degrees of freedom. So uh, we fully understand the structure of semi group. However, uh, we should remember that in general, this is just an approximation to the true evolution, right? True evolution is as very rare as the structure of Markov and semi group. Only for very, very special interaction coming part of everything. You do not need this additional approximations. Okay. Well, uh, 
the semi-group evolution is also nicely compatible with standard thermodynamical laws. For example, if the environmental state is thermal, right? It was proved in the in the in the seventies by by Davies that under Markovian semi-group, the density operator of the system also thermalizes to the thermal state, but with respect to the uh, Hamiltonian of the system. And actually, the, the, the evolution governed by, in, in this case, is compatible with the second law. By this, I understand that the so-called entropy, entropy production rate is, is semi-positive. Right? So, it has nice, nice mathematical representation and is pretty compatible with other physical, physical laws. So, Excuse me, uh, may yes. I ask the, Please. a stupid question Please. because I'm not really working in this. Thermalizes, if this is and thermalizes, it means that it stops to be really quantum and it becomes classic as a result of the interaction with the environment or it's completely something else? Well, uh, classical, but in, in, in what sense, right? Just, just wait a moment. I, I will, I will also try to, to touch this point of, of classical, right? Uh, as I said, uh, 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 hi, Derek. I, I just wanted yes. to, to to ask you because in this theorem you just mentioned. You have to assume something about this interaction, Hamiltonian. What do you assume? Absolutely, yes. No, no, there, there is, you know. What is the assumption there? No, no, knowing, knowing the interaction Hamiltonian, there is an additional assumption about, you know, the structure of environmental correlation function. You are right, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There is additional okay. assumption about two point, two time, um, correlation function of the environment. No, no, okay, absolutely, you. you are perfectly right. Well, there is another question. Yes, please. Another question, Lukasz Kurski. Okay, then maybe we continue. Maybe, maybe Lukasz will ask on that. Okay, as, as I said, this is this theory of open. All right, all right, all right. I'm switch on. Uh, I have a question. I mean, what's yes, the please. difference between so far presented procedure and what is known since years in statistical physics under the name of a Moritz Fanzig approach? I mean, we, we I mean, we know that if we if we trace out of you, uh -huh. if we Checked out the degrees of freedom of environment. Yes. Then we get an equation which is not Markovian. It's 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 uh, it has a memory kernel and so forth and so forth. And that is a, that's a fundamental tool which is used since I don't know twenty to more forty years at least. Oh, even more, even more, even more than six. Even more. I mean, oh. because it was known even before Mori and Bob Swansik have. Written. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Uh, so is uh, and there is also a quantum version of a more Swansing equation. So I'm a little bit confused. What's the difference between uh, what we hear so far and this uh, procedure? You also have environment, and you have a coupling, and the the fact which you just mentioned that. The degrees of freedom of interactions are important in the procedure, and that is what is hidden in the memory kernel of the memory transferring operation. So that was my question. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for for your for your question. You are absolutely perfectly right. This is this is very special scenario of that more general you just mentioned, and actually. Within a few slides, I'm going to talk about uh, this more general approach of Tsvansik, Nakajima Tsvansik. Okay, just okay. please. Thank you a lot. Wait, wait a second. Yeah. Thank you, but thank you very much for your for your for your comment.
So, just I would like to stress that nowadays this, the CRA is really very, very important, especially for people working in, in quantum information, because somehow we, we learn from the CRA how to control such detrimental processes like dissipation or decoherence. We may learn how to, how to protect a system against noise, or we may try to learn how to use this bad, bad things like dissipation or decoherence for, for good. For example, how to use the noise, for example, to transform initial state to some um, important target state. And so let, let, me, let me continue. Oh, again, actually, Professor Turski, next slide, somehow refers to, to your comment. So how to go beyond, how to go beyond this very special Markovian semi-group scenario. So let me stress that open quantum systems cannot always be described with the Mar uh, Markov approximation, which in, in, in general requires a, a, a large separation of system and environmental time scales. So how to go beyond? Which approach, which, which description to use? And there are plenty of proposals. For example, people try to replace time independent generator, which is responsible for Markovian semi, semi group, by time dependent. Another one just mentioned by Professor Turski is celebrated Nakajima's fancy approach, which allows you to derive that kind of equation which is governed by so-called memory kernel superoperator. So now look, in, 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 uh, in this equation, well, it's, it's obviously time non-local. In this equation, to, to compute the, the time derivative at time t, somehow you, you need to know the, the whole history of your density operator start, starting from initial state, starting from initial time, which is zero up to the current time. But there are plenty of, of other, other techniques. So to go, for example, from that kind of equation to, to Mar Markovian one, still there are several well-defined approximations. Essentially, the, 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 the main point is to observe that what is the most essential factor. Can I make a short can I interrupt you? I'm sorry yes, for, for being yes, so long. I mean, uh, uh, this... yes, please, but, uh, please shortly and maybe. No, I'm, I'm, I just uh, want to make a comment that. that. Yeah, I, I just Can want to make a comment. A short question. Okay, okay. I'm, 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 the, the comment is simple that this memory kernel in this fancy business does not necessarily imply that this is not Markovian because it depends on the length scale of the memory function. And that depends, of course, on the correlation functions, which are hidden in the interaction of the environment with the thing. I mean, the, the, there is a whole chapter of statistical physics, which is called the mod coupling theory, which is basically based on it, in what sense this memory kernel might become similar to the Markovian equation. That was the comment, thank you. No, no, you're absolutely right. So essentially this, this uh, memory kernel encodes information of all multi-time correlation function, functions of the environment. Essentially, and if you can, uh, if you can neglect all multi-time correlation functions, apart from two-point correlation functions, then essentially this, this memory kernel stuff reduces to Markovian semi Okay, so in my talk, I will, I will, because of lack of time, I will concentrate on time local approach, right? Okay. Okay, so what we know about the most general most general time dependent generator giving rise to physically legitimate evolution, which means completely positive and, 
and trace preserving. So actually the generator has a familiar structure, but now all objects are time dependent. So the Hamiltonian is time dependent. All rates are time dependent. All noise operators are time dependent as well. This is a formal solution. We need this, you know, time ordering because now the family is not commuting. But the new thing, comparing to uh, original Markovian semi group, is that now there is no need that all rates are positive. Let me illustrate this with a very, very simple qubit evolution. Let us, let us uh, consider qubit dephasing, where now rate gamma is time dependent. And it's very easy to check that this generator gives rise to a, leg a legitimate evolution under this condition, right? That the integral of gamma is positive. So a uh, small gamma itself can be temporarily negative, provided that the integral is positive, because the integral enters the solution. Mm -hmm. So even with, with the gamma temporally negative, we can get physical, physical, physically legitimate evolution. So now the question people studied was, uh, is the following, how to define the concept of Markovianity beyond a semi-group scenario? And actually there are plenty of approaches. So this is a sketch of, 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 of different uh, approaches. So let, let me comment on uh, two of them. There is a very popular definition of Markovianity. One calls uh, dynamical map, right, Markovian. If and only if it enjoys the following properties that a, a map at time t can be always decomposed into two factors, map starting from zero up to s, and another map. We may call it just propagator. Right, propagating a state from time s to time t. And the requirement is that for any pair of t and s, this family of propagator is completely positive and trace preserving. And actually, you can prove the following nice result that in order to have that kind of evolution, well, very often uh, that kind of evolution is called just divisible, right? Because the map can be divided into factors. And each factor is physically legitimate because it is completely positive and trace preserving. And the nice thing is that we have a full characterization of maps like that. Because for maps like that, the generator necessarily has to have all rates non-negative. So the Markovian, uh, the evolution is non-Markovian in the sense, right? Okay. That which means that it cannot be decomposed into legitimate factor, if and only if at least one rate is temporally negative. But Markovian dynamics enjoys many, many interesting and nice properties. One of them is very, very important because if, if, you, if this law is violated, it means that the evolution is, is evident in Markovian. Based on, on this observation, uh, a lot of non-Markovianity measures were proposed. And this, this very simple, very simple uh, inequality has, uh, has a very nice uh, physical interpretation because the trace norm of the difference of two states can be nicely interpreted as distinguishability between state row one and row two. So it, uh, um, somehow it means that uh, distinguishability uh, could, uh, could uh, increase in time, which is interpreted as an information backflow from the environment to the system. So during the Markovian evolution, the, uh, the information goes from the system to the environment. If you can observe the reverse process, right? You interpret it via, well, telling that the evolution is not Markovian or the, some, some kind of memory effect during the evolution of your system. Well, I plan to, to, to present some, some simple examples 
or maybe maybe I present one. Very simple evolution. Generator is just a, you know combination of that kind of the, that kind. Oh, okay, so anyway, generator is very simple, right? The evolution is Markovian, as we know, if all rates are non-negative. However, the evolution enjoys no information backflow if the weaker condition is satisfied. So we do not require that all rates are non-negative, but only some of rates are negative. They are non-negative. Let me skip this example. Okay, so last point I, I, I'm going to discuss, if you still allow me, is the connection to the concept of a dynamical map to the concept of a stochastic process, classical and quantum. Because, you know, here, here um, on the level of a dynamical map, people introduce several concepts of Markovianity, but we know from the theory of classical stochastic processes as, as, as there is a well-defined concept of Markovian stochastic process, which was Essentially defined 100 years ago by, by Commodore. Right? So, is there a an, an, uh, clear link? Because the concept we use here for dynamical system and the concept which was developed in the theory of stochastic processes 100 years ago. Okay, so what we mean by, by classical stochastic process? Well, classical stochastic process essentially is, is characterized by infinite hierarchy of. Uh, endpoint probability distribution, right? And this this family enjoys this well known, well known um, um, consistency rule, which is called consistency Kolmogorov condition. Well, again, infinite infinite uh, family of conditions, and the process is is Markovian if and only if it enjoys this celebrated law that. Conditional probability, right? Essentially, it does not depend on the history, only on the last last point. Well, to simplify notation, I I, I just skip skip uh, you know uh, times, right? And well, as you know, if if the process is Markovian, we have this nice chapman komogorov equation, well known from classical classical theory. Okay. What about the quantum process, right? How to define quantum process, how to define the, the concept of Markovianity for the quantum process. Okay, so to define a, a, a family of probabilities, we have to perform a measurement on the system. So suppose, well, let me consider the simplest scenario, uh, projective measurement, right? So I fix an autonomous basis, some corresponding rank one projectors, and this is a essential measurement, measurement map. So let me consider a composite system, system plus environment, which is governed by this unitary evolution law. And let me define the family of n point probabilities, or well, statistics, measurement statistics, by a very simple scenario, right? This is the initial state. So I evolve by unitary up to time one. I perform projective measurement, I evolve projective measurement, and so on, and eventually I, I trace. So this this uh, this process is depicted here. It is taken from the nice, nice paper. So we perform projective measurement on the system, evolve the total one, again projective measurement, unit revolution, and so on. Right. So you have a family of well-defined probability distributions. Of course, this, this family depends on, 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 the, on the measurement you, you decide to perform. Okay, so this is a family, right? So again, let's try to call this family to be Markovian, if it enjoys the, the standard Komogor definition. And let us call it this this uh, this family to be classical if it enjoys the classical 
Kolmogorov consistency condition. In this case, well, what, what, what I mean by, by classical? So the process was defined entirely in terms of, you know, legitimate quantum uh, mechanical operations. So we have quantum states, quantum operation, quantum measurement. However, if this additional uh, condition is satisfied, you may somehow simulate the same kind of uh, statistics using purely classical stochastic process. We know it from Komogorov, right? Because Kom Komogorov proves that if you have a family of probability distributions which enjoy this consistency condition, you can always define the classical process, classical stochastic process, which gives rise to that kind of probability distributions. So, again, the same, the, I, I repeat the definitions of Markovianity and classicality. Note, however, that even if the, if the process is Markovian in the sense, in general, in the quantum scenario, uh, Chapman Kolmogorov does not work. It works only if, apart from Markovianity, you add this extra condition, classicality. So Chapman Kolmogorov is a, is a property of a classic, classical process, not a quantum, but classical. Okay, so actually, this this uh, very simple uh, definition of Markovianity, which is just borrowed from from Komogorov by itself from 100 years ago, is fully consistent with the following property, which people working in, in quantum optics know, know very well. This is called quantum regression formula. In quantum regression formula. Tell us that this family, which is defined here, so here, look, here we need uh, the, the evolution of the total system, system plus environment. But quantum regression formula means that the same result can be obtained if we use only uh, object acting on the system itself. So, so math acting on the system. So instead of, 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 of this picture, right, then you measure unitary evolve the total system, measure unitary evolve. Now you have much simpler one. Right? You measure, you evolve only the density operator of the system, you measure, evolve density operator of the system and so on. So just to summarize that part, this is the general quantum process, measurement, unitary evolution, measurement, and so on. And here is the Markovian process. The Markovian process means that there is a family of maps, right? This lambdas parameterized by two, two, two family of maps, lambdas, such that those two pictures are fully equivalent. And actually, to test. Okay, so this is a this is a. I, I have a question. Yes. In this first yes. process, what happens with the environment? Does it change or? No, in general, of course, in general, it, 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 it changes, right? Changes. In general, everything changes, right? Both states of the system and, and the environment, but you remember, eventually we we trace out everything, right? And here, uh, yes, yes, because of this is an evolution it, of the composite. yes. Yeah. Eventually, we trace out everything. So what what comes out is a number which we interpret it as a probability distribution, right? So there is a nice nice uh, relation of um, Markovianity of the process and Markovianity of the map, because essentially you see that Markovianity of the process requires the, the very concept of divisibility, because the, the dynamical map has to be divisible in the sense that it can be split it into maps lambda, T1, lambda, T1, and so on, right? So in this sense, these two pictures are consistent. What about classicality? 
again, classicality means that uh, the process enjoys this hierarchy of consistency conditions. How to test whether or not given a process enjoys this? Um, we have very nice tool, so-called legged guard inequalities. So in contrast to, to spatial well inequalities, which probe entanglement of quantum non-locality between spatially separated system, the legged guard inequalities test the correlations of a single system measured at different times. And actually, uh, this approach is based on two assumptions. One of them is called macro, macroscopic rallies, which essentially says that measurement on a macroscopic system just reveals a well-defined pre-existing value. And the second assumption is called non-invasive measure, measure, measurability, measurability, which essentially says that this well-defined pre-existing pre value can be measured without uh, disturbing the system. And uh, it, was, it was nicely uh, proved that uh, the very concept of classicality, which is just this hierarchy of Komogorov consistency conditions, immediately implies that all kinds of legged guard inequalities are satisfied. Here, I just wanted to discuss uh, just the simplest, simplest one, but because of lack of time, I'm, I'm just skip it. So the message is that whenever, whenever we can observe violation of legged guard inequality, we know that the process is, is not classical, right? The statistic, the statistics we get cannot be simulated by classical stochastic process. This is in the full analogy to, the, to a well-known scenario whenever we observe violation of, of Val, uh, we know that the state is entangled. Okay, I, I skip this. I wanted to, to, to show you some, some simple examples which illustrate the, the introduced concept, but because of lack of time, I just skip. But if anybody is interested, we can, we can discuss after. So let me just summarize. There are still active investigation about that kind of topics. There are still many, many often problems and interesting issues. For example, this uh, time local generators and uh, memory kernels are still not fully characterized. We know a lot of examples giving rise to legitimate physical evolution, but still we do not have universal uh, universal representation as in the case of semi-group. There is an active debate about non-equilibrium processes application in, in uh, quantum thermodynamics, how we can use non-Markovian, non-Markovian, right? In parallel <laughs> to uh, how we can use quantum entanglement. There are still many interesting uh, mathematical issues like uh, spectral analysis of generators, exceptional points, properties of typical generators, and uh, still it is quite intriguing how, how the very notion of complete positivity can be, can be confirmed in, in the laboratory. Recently, we, we propose a, a family of constraints for relaxation rates, which can be eventually tested in the, in the laboratory. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Now time for questions. No, Rafał then coach. Okay, so maybe we start with Rafał. Rafał, please. Okay, yes. Uh, so, Darek, you, uh, regarding the stochastic process uh, relation, 
you 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 showed it in a way that we chose measurements, some projective measurements yes. at given points, which is just a yes. special case to 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 analyze it. And there is this more general framework developed by Kavan Modi, where where you somehow mm -hmm. put arbitrary channels instead of yes. these projectors and discuss this process. Uh, I don't know quantum stochastic process in a sense. Uh, mapping from this uh, operations you put to to the final state. So can you comment how like uh, really insightful it is, how helpful it is to analyze really physical processes? Thank you very much for your for for your comments. You are perfectly right. So there is a, a, a more general uh, scenario when instead of just a moment where instead of uh, this very special projective measurement, which is represented you know, by very simple, completely positive map with only one cross operator, you can, uh, uh, you can use more general, more general maps, right? People call them uh, quantum instruments. So here in, in, in this picture, instead of this simple, completely positive maps, just projective measurements, you may insert arbitrary quantum instruments. So this guy, Stavan Modi and, and others, insist that um, the, the process is Markovian whenever uh, quantum regression holds, not only for the, the, the special, right? but for an uh, arbitrary instrument, right? <laughs> so here you may just say that it is, it is Markovian with respect to this very special measurement, essentially projective measurement, right? But you may, of course, consider much more general scenario. And this much more general scenario is, well, very elegant and allows you know, to, to introduce the concept of super channels, uh, quantum comps, etc., and you know, it is it is uh, nowadays very much elaborated. But you are you are perfectly right that this is just very special scenario with projective measurements. In general, you can use much more general, essentially so-called quantum instrument. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, more questions, Professor Piotrowski. I have actually two questions. One stupid and one which I believe is a bit more intelligent. The stupid question is that you insist from the very beginning on linear evolution of rho. Yes. Why linear? I remember our older friend and colleague Bogdan Mielny who was always looking for, uh, who always insisted that the evolution of of the quantum state, mixed quantum state, in principle, is can could be nonlinear. Of course, the answer, the trivial answer, is that everything is linear in first approximation. But what is your opinion? And then I will have second question. No, there, there were several attempts to define a legitimate. Nonlinear theory, well, also by uh, very serious people, like, like for example, uh, Steven Weinberg. Right? Uh, there are always some problems, like, for example, well known signaling. But from the mathematical point of view, there are serious problems to consistently define uh, uh, the very notion of uh, complete positivity. Yes, for nonlinear maps. There were some attempts, but uh, this this project is still uh, poorly developed. So linear, completely positive maps are very well analyzed and, and fully, fully understood. Non-linear, the, the development of the theory is in a very poor stage. And the second uh, question is the following, is that um, open system, physical open system, are not only important in quantum physics, but also in classical physics. And because 
classical field theory may be easily uh, translated into the language of uh, of uh, unitary uh, evolution in a Hilbert space, right. then I wonder whether this approach can also be uh, applicable to to classical open systems. Uh, of course, they are not classical in uh, in the sense you mentioned, because classical right, right. is a difference between classical in quantum here during your lecture. Yes. That in classical system, when you uh, know that it is in a one state, it cannot be in another state. But a string, for instance, a classical string <laughs> may be in a state which is a composition of eigen uh, states. Yeah. But it does not need to be a sinusoidal, just sinusoidal uh, vibration, but, uh, but still uh, mathematically it can be perfectly translated into the language of the Hilbert space, self-adjoint operator which uh, implies the evolution and, and so on and so on. What do you think about classical open systems uh, treated this way. OK, thank you very much for your question. Of course, you are perfectly right that we have, for example, this beautiful Koopman approach, right, when we can somehow reformulate all classical Hamiltonian I dynamics have, into, yeah. into, into the well, well-defined yeah. evolution in the appropriate Hilbert space. Uh, some time ago, I, I, I used this approach uh, to study resonances, right, for, for, uh, mm -hmm. for uh, some, some Hamiltonians. I, I don't know any, any, any work in, in that direction, right? But, but you're right that in, in, in principle, because we can uh, essentially reformulate the original classical problem. Exactly in that kind of frame, we may use essentially the same method, right? But I don't know about any, any development in, in that direction, but Am I is very intriguing. Am I okay, so uh, maybe we have a question for, uh, time for, let's say, two uh, short questions. Uh, I maybe the same the, 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 uh, ah, no, pardon. There was uh, Lukas, Lukas, please. Uh, I have a comment which is related to the Professor Kioski question. But also in a, in, a, in a subject of a lecture, it, it, the problem is that you have discussed the dissipation in a very narrow sense of that word. In many physical applications, a dissipation is complicated by the fact that there are variables in the dynamical system which are not affected by the dissipation, for example, order parameters. You mentioned the example of the Bloch equation, the decay of a magnetization. In the model you have shown, the magnetization decays to zero. That's not the case in the money in most of the experiments in magnetization. And the most used dissipative theory of a magnetization is based on what is called the Ginzburg-Landau equation or Landau-Lifshitz equation, which is, and that now I make a comment to the question of Professor Kiyowski, which is entirely nonlinear equation. And that uh, uh, does not fit. Yeah in the description you have shown. I mean, this is the equation where the magnetization, the length of M is decaying to zero in a time which yeah. is a one over dt. This, is, this, this equation is in the theory of a magnetic resonance called the longitudinal dissipation. And there is a transverse dissipation, which is more important. If you go and pay for your MRI test, they 
give you in a piece of paper. Uh, pardon, there are, there are other people waiting to ask yeah, questions. So I I'm, I'm just, just wanted to say that the nonlinearity is essential if you have to preserve the order parameter. And the order parameter is uh, is one of the crucial issues in the in the dense matter physics, statistical physics, and so forth. So this uh, this presentation uh, is what I was missing was a definition of a dissipation. Okay, thank you for your comment. Now maybe from the audience there was a question, please. Thank you very thank you very much for your question. But you know it's a, it's a, it's a huge uh, huge subject, right? So it's impossible to, to answer within one minute. Maybe we can we can uh, discuss uh, later because you know it's it very much depends on the interaction and fun and synthetic state, etc. Sure, thank Thanks. you. Uh, maybe the last question, this time from the internet. Uh, please go ahead, Bilal. Uh, hello, thank you for this uh, nice presentation. And my question is Do you believe that we should connect the classical and quantum notion of Markovianity because they are rely on the uh, two different notions. For example, we are talking about the evolution of the probabilities in the classical case, but on the other hand, we are talking about the evolution of the quantum state. Quantum state is not the probability in the sense of the classicality. So when you look at the carefully, they are, it seems that the these two notions are very different from each other. My question is, should we connect them to each other? At least no, it's no. not possible to connect them to each other directly. It is not possible because they are the the two different notions. One, in one case, we are talking about evolution of the probabilities. In the quantum case, we are talking about evolution of the quantum state. I think. Thank you for your, for, for your comment and question. Of course, you're right. They are not, they are not the same. My, my goal was, was to show that there are different concepts of, of, of Markovianity. Even we can, we can define uh, this, this very concept or, or on different levels. For example, on, on the level of dynamics, on the level of a uh, stochastic process, they are different, but they are also intriguing uh, connections. And um, originally, the concept was uh, introduced uh, on the level of classical uh, stochastic process, but as, as I was uh, trying uh, to show, the concept concept can be uh, in a coherent way defined also in the quantum scenario, both for uh, completely uh, completely positive evolutions and for uh, processes quantum processes where by quantum process I mean unitary evolution of the composite system plus a family of measurements on the system itself. Okay. okay. So uh, let's close the discussion at this point. Derek still will stay with yes. us for a couple of hours more today. So if someone is interested, uh, he will still be around a little bit today. Um, thank you very much.